And we are live with Richie Sullivan in the green room tonight. All right. Woo, put your hands up. Yay. Put your hands in the air. All right. So so just before we went with live, I uh, a couple of things. I want to get right out, right off the top. You started doing the five at five live stream thing where you take uh, song requests. And can they request anything? Uh, okay. I know a lot of songs. I don't know all of them yet. But uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I I... I totally encourage the request. I really want to hear what people like. Uh, and yeah, I mean, if I, I, if I know it, I know a lot of different stuff. I know like rock and country and oldies and eighties and nineties and death metal and gangster rap, you know, whatever you guys want to hear. Uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to do. Okay. So uh, if, if I say, uh, can you play a uh, roll out the barrel? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> All right. All right. So, okay. If it's a request that people like now, um, uh, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> so then the, the other thing that we were talking about is, um, uh, playing in bands and the kind of thing we do and, and, uh, mm -hmm. this kind of being the new way. And, and, and I was suggesting, and this way we started with the, it's a party in here. Right. Uh, uh, of all of the bands, you know, when I was doing uh, sound and you were on the stage, you know, you were one of the most happy, easygoing guys. And I always, whenever I would see your name on the call sheet, I'm like, oh, great. I don't have to worry about the guitar player. <laughs> you know? Nice. I appreciate that, Jeff. Like, no. I actually, to, to, to give it back to you a bit, uh, I feel the same way about when you were on sound, for sure. Well, thank you. Uh, you know, and that's, that's a good thing that it's just us talking because other people may have a different idea about that. <laughs> I can't imagine why. No. Uh, you know, um, <laughs> we, okay, I get to do, I get to do gigs with competent, is the correct word, yeah. uh, sound men. Um, and then there's guys who, are really really good at what they do and and you're in that you're in that i i totally feel that way oh well thank you yeah i totally feel that way you're one of the best and uh <laughs> uh i've also done gigs with completely horrible and i don't i'm not i don't know any names I, honestly but yeah guys it just like it's just like it's so hard to make it work right. and and so so honestly people like a good sound man it's a big deal, guys. It is a big deal. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and but so so now uh, this this is we're in that gigging world that people talk about. You know, this one thing that uh, that is kind of coming up and has come up in the past month, especially because we have no work, right? It, well, the, the gigs just kind of went and right, we, right, right. Uh, and for a minute, people started talking about uh, the gigging industry. But what was bugging me is they were talking mostly about uh, servers and restaurant workers. And, right. and then they go entertainment. And I'm thinking, well, wait a minute. The gigging world are guys like you and me that are out there doing all those casuals, all those kind of, you know, dates that nobody thinks about. And right as thankless as playing that wedding is sometimes because the, yeah, you know, you can, it is still a living and we do all of those kinds of gigs and the corporate gigs. And, you know, who, who's thinking about those guys that are doing those gigs? Uh, you know, clearly <laughs> it's not the first thing people are thinking about. I mean, obviously, there's this huge, uh, you know, restaurants, that's a huge industry, right? That's a, like just giant, right? Right. Um, but, you know, people aren't thinking about, about this very much, uh, you know, and uh, un until they need us, you know? Yeah, right. Well, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting. I think there's this, and it goes way back to when I was a kid, and I don't know how it was when you grew up. Mm -hmm. um where uh back i grew up in nebraska where even until my parents 
passed. People were still asking my parents, did Jeff ever get a real job? <laughs> <laughs> it's like right, right. So yes, and and that's a little bit a little bit true uh, for for me as well, you know. You know, I go back for the holidays and and whatnot, you know, and 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 a little bit like, so you're still doing that whole silly music thing. You know, they didn't say silly, but you know, you, you kind of get that vibe, right? You know. Well, where'd you grow up? I, I grew up in Oklahoma. Oh, dude. Did I did I ever know that? No, I don't think we never had that conversation. No. You and I technically shouldn't like each other then. Uh oh. Okay, it, why? You're from Texas? No. Is to the north, not Kansas. Nebraska? Nebraska. Oh, even worse, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? I tell you what, we're talking football rivalry rivalries, mm, right? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, you know, what? music people, I don't know about you. But with for me, not as much. Right. You know, you know, I, I I didn't care as much about the sports. You know, I am. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm vaguely interested, but yeah, it was like there were people there who were crazy about the sports and and all the, the whole, uh, you know, OU and OSU, right. big football, big time. Uh, back then, it was uh, the Big Eight. I don't know what it is now. It's the Big Ten, Big Twelve, I believe. Okay. The Big 12. Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, was Nebraska in the same con conference? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I, I don't know how old you are, but um, when I was a kid and really, you know, I was like 12, uh, Nebraska and Oklahoma in like 70, 71, 72 were like rated one and two in in football rankings. And, and that, wow. that's when I had – you know, I was a kid and you know, I was kind of into music, but it was, oh, I'm, you know, 12. I want to play. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. Of course. You know, you, if you grew up in a state like that, you, you, you had to be aware of, of football. Right. I mean, come on. College right. football is huge. Right. Huge, huge, huge. So, so now knowing that about you uh, and I would wanted to play football, but I started to grow my hair long because I was, I was into music and the football coach actually said, uh, are, are you going to cut your hair and be, be, a, be a man and play football? Or are you going to be a candy-ass musician? <laughs> no. Yeah. Did he really say that? He did. I am not kidding. Uh, he, that's exactly what he called me, a candy-ass musician. Candy-ass musician. Yes. Really? Yeah. See, okay. This is why there's a divergence between the jocks and the not jocks, okay, or, or actually more like the artsy people, right? Kind of like us, you know, because because they kind of make any windows like that, you know. And and don't give me, I mean, I like, I admire um, people with athletic abilities, you know, right? Um, but <laughs> there are musicians who uh, can do incredible things and they, they we the sing and dance and do all this stuff and it's it's very physical and i myself i am exhausted sometimes after some of these shows some of these shows are so uh there's so much choreography uh and there's so much going on and it's a mental game too i mean it's i know that like playing football is a mental game uh right. but what we do is a very very mental game you know, well, it is. And, and the other thing I think that we don't really get credit for as performing musicians is it does take physical and mental ability to yeah. do it. And uh, the other thing that really is a little bit more uh, extreme, I think, is the emotions that we attach to our performance. Right. Which actually can be uh, <laughs> draining more than people understand. You know, right, because right. That's how we communicate. So. <laughs> that feels like such a validation, by the way, Jeff. <laughs> it's so true, though, man. I mean, there there are these there are moments there are like where you just like you get really into uh, whatever it is that 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 song is about, and you're really trying to uh, connect with that moment. And you're trying to push that moment into the 
um, into the audience. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, there, it's, there's a total, like a, a drain or a, a thing that goes along with that, you know? So, so now in Oklahoma, were you close to Oklahoma city or, uh, you know, where I grew up in Oklahoma city. Okay. So was, uh, a K O M a radio station still a big thing when you were a kid? Uh, yeah. K O M a, um, <laughs> wow. You, okay. That you're bringing back some memories. I'm actually kind of, uh, I'm trying to, I'm kind of curious why you know about, uh, well, K O M a. Well, it's, it was one of the, uh, there were two radio stations that we could get in Nebraska. KOMA out of Oklahoma City and WOW out of Chicago. No kidding. And why I got into music was because I would listen to KOMA and they would talk about, I mean, I, I kind of liked music, but they would talk about bands from Lawrence, Kansas and John Brown Entertainment. Really? The, the fabulous flippers and the roaring red dogs and spider and the crabs and the rising suns and all of those kinds of bands. And they would play teen dances. Wow. Mm -hmm. what, what, what years was this again? This was 70 through 74, 68 through 74, pretty much. Wow. Uh, was, was, it, was it an AM station? Yes. Okay. Oh, so that's why it could reach that far because AM... <laughs> For you younger listeners, uh, <laughs> AM radio actually has the capability of of jumping states. It can go like really, really long distances. Right. Um, yeah, I, I've I've driven to Las Vegas and listened to KFI. You know, yeah. uh, you know that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so so back in the seventies, you could listen to KOMA. Right, and that was the my station of choice. And they, I think, they carried the Wolfman Jack show. Well, Ben Jack, I remember Joe. Yeah, I remember that. So, so what? It, so that's what sort of got got me going into music a little bit. What what inspired you to get into music? Being in Oklahoma City. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I, I I tell you what, um, uh, we're, we're going to get into a personal experience here. Sure. Um, I remember. With sitting in a seventy, a green seventy-three Charger, those are just badass looking, badass looking cars. Um, with the the eight track plugged into the stereo. Yes, eight tracks. And this is the very first time I'd ever heard "Eruption" by Van Halen. Whoa! And they cranked it. There's like my brother and his best friend John, and they were just blasting eruption. And I, and I was just amazed, amazed. Like this is music. This is something that's people are doing this. It absolutely floored me. I was amazed. And, you know, uh, so that was, that was one of the first things. And then, you know, some, me and my friends kind of get it. Okay. This might be embarrassing. Now we got into kiss and you know, that whole, like, <laughs> <laughs> that whole thing. Uh, uh, but yeah. Uh, so now the other thing, this was a, this was a big thing. My, um, my, my friend, John, that was the driver of the charger. Um, they had a, a, they had a party in their backyard. Uh, I was about 12 years old. I wasn't invited. The parents were all invited, right? It's one of these cul-de-sac uh, suburban communities, uh, in Oklahoma. And, uh, I was about, I was 12 years old and, um, they had a party and they had a band at their party and everyone at their, uh, party was, uh, I'm sorry, everyone at the band, everyone in the band right, was the, these young people. They were like, honest to God, they were like 13 or 14 and 15 years old. They played country music and they were actually really, really good country music yeah okay. and they were they were great they were fantastic and i i kind of slipped into the party because I, I knew my parents were there and uh I, I i came in and i saw this band playing and it totally like a bug bit me like at that point i was like 
this is something I can do. I was 12. These guys, the, the youngest guy in the band was like 13. I was like, this is something I can do. Mm. And it just like, it just, it just struck me, man. Yeah. So that's my story. Yeah. That's my, that's kind of my, that's to a huge extent. That's my story. But, but that's cool. I mean, I, I, I can totally get the eight track and the 73. <laughs> 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 right the eight track you remember the the six by nine speakers that they had like in the in the back dashboard yeah yeah <laughs> totally dating ourselves yes but talking well, about yeah. that and, and there's nothing more midwest than you know the, the car that i was driving around in was my friend's gto he had like a oh, 70 oh dude yeah. that's a dope car right <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, uh, what how, what made you pick guitar, or did you start on another instrument? Um, no, I, I totally was with guitar, and it was it was me and my my friends. <laughs> this is going to be an embarrassing story. We uh, <laughs> the kids on the block. Uh, we were like kind of getting into music. We were all like these young 13 year old kids, 12, 13 year old kids. And we decided that we were going to form a, a kiss band. Oh. And we had no idea what any of this meant, but you know, we just picked our friends like, okay, your drums and your, your, okay. So you're Peter Chris. Okay. This is literally what happened. You're Peter Chris. And in your Gene Simmons and your Paul Stanley and your Ace Freely, da 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 da, uh, and I, I don't remember if I was supposed to be Paul or or, or I was I was I was Ace Freely or or Paul, and uh, anyway, out of that group, I was like, no, no, seriously, guys, I mean, I mean this, I, I'm I'm doing this like for reals. I'm going to, I'm getting a, I'm getting a guitar and I'm, I'm going to do this. Um, and to me, that was the dream. Like that, that was the whole thing. <laughs> and clearly dreams come true. Right. Okay. So, all right. So you're in Oklahoma. Yeah. Oklahoma city. You're doing a, a, a kiss band. And <laughs> yeah. so, so, I'm afraid people are watching this. They are. <laughs> I, know, I could not find much pictures of you other than uh, I'll show you a couple of these. These are pictures of you. Um, and this is a cool, I, I'm just going to show uh, next to your face here. Uh, it's a picture of you at the, um, uh, oh my God. And I just went, just went blank on the room. Uh, but anyway, it's from the mixing board and I have one of these mixing boards. So I thought it was cool. And it's a cool picture. And I'm kind of a, a gear gearhead you're playing with a band in a club um okay uh you know i actually can tell you what it is i think if i look if i look close um but the other picture i'm going to put up is just a just a great picture of you playing guitar in a band it's a great picture and it looks like you're at maybe um you know some uh, some museum um and then one other picture this is just i'm fast forwarding so people know that you're 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 not the kiss band guy <laughs> all right so there's there's a few pictures of you and uh so what what got you out of okay okay you know what i'm i'm right okay hang on a second hang on i am checking in on this oh okay so, well, i'll put this picture back with you in the club i okay i see i know what that one is that's a that's a standing room in the hermosa beach yeah 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 okay yeah that's a that's a great shot i love that well see i found lots of pictures like that but i found no pictures of you dressed like you know gene simmons or anything now some of those gotta exist now I, if there was anybody listening right now, you know, somebody show me a picture of richie dressed up like kiss <laughs> okay <laughs> okay for one dressing up actually like kiss is a really big ordeal really and i did do it once really i did i did it on uh on a halloween way back in the 90s and i do have pictures of that and i i 
if you're interested, I will send you, if I can find them, I will find, I will send you pictures. Okay. <laughs> Post them. I'll go, hey, remember that? <laughs> uh, I know. I don't know. You know what? I'm, a, I'm afraid that that, uh, so, okay. <laughs> I feel like that gives me a, like a narrow view of music and performance and all that stuff. Okay. Well, 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 let's transition. So what got you out of that into the, the uh, broad musician that you are now? Where'd you go next? So, so what it comes down to is, you know, what, what I realized, and this is way back in my Oklahoma days, uh, is that, you know, if you need to pay to pay the bills, you got to do, you can't just do, you can't just make what makes yourself happy. I mean, sometimes you get to do that, but you got to do, you know, what the audience wants. And, 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 and that's going to be, it's going to be whatever it is. And that, that has, that, that has led me down a lot of different roads and, and I've gotten to appreciate uh so such a broad spectrum of music on um, you know and you know jazz and and, and country and and r and b and and just so so many things um that that i've come to ab absolutely love you know and players that i absolutely love mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know well, did did you uh, join a band and tour, or did you uh, finally get decide that you wanted to move to LA because that's where all the music was? How did where did you go? Well, so that's uh, what happened when I was in Oklahoma. I I was playing in this band. Uh, they were actually getting we were getting very popular in Oklahoma, mm -hmm. and uh, we went to uh, we see we had these we had original songs that we recorded uh, at great expense back then. It was very expensive to record. Uh, and we actually had our songs playing on the radio in Oklahoma. On KOMA? Not KOMA uh, as far as I know. <laughs> uh, but there was another big radio station called KATT. That was the a FM station in Oklahoma. Uh, and, uh, and KATT actually played my, our material. Uh, and they were like probably the, the number one station in Oklahoma uh, at the time. And so, so we were definitely getting big there and we just decided to, to move to a bigger market. Uh, I moved to California, to Los Angeles with the band I was in. The whole <laughs> band. The whole band. The whole band moved to California. It, it, so when, when was that? <laughs> 1991 as a matter of fact uh i believe i arrived in uh august okay so you're half my age <laughs> you're a young really yeah <laughs> my daughter my first daughter was born in 91 you look so young jeff oh well that's only on camera you know <laughs> you got a good makeup guy right <laughs> Right. So, so you moved to California with the band. And yes. What happened? What happened with the band when you got here? Uh, so, I mean, we we made a great run of it. Uh, we stayed together as a band a couple of years. Uh, the whole thing with the record labels and all that stuff coming out to see us play, it didn't happen. Uh, and after about four years, we all went separate ways. Hmm. So. Uh, you know, some people who might be watching or, or, or friends or anybody that, you know, uh, what's that experience like, especially in those days, trying to shop a band and a record? It is it's brutal, right? Uh, absolutely. I'm sure it's like 100 percent more brutal now uh, because, you know, because they don't it's, there's so little to go around it's just different too you know yeah. the technology but back then you had to actually either record something or perform for them or i mean what was the protocol they're trying oh dude that was the thing you had to like you had to have a good live show you had to like be able to do it for real live hmm. um and and you had to have a good recording and you had to have sold a few of your recordings uh if you know like maybe probably hundreds 
of your recordings just to get them to get even slightly interested in you. Uh, yeah, so, and that's what we did. I mean, uh, we spent something like $10,000. I'm talking about 1992, two ninety-three, something like that. $1992, $10,000 recording. Okay, just think about that. That alone, it's twice that now, by the way. If you do inflation, that's $20,000, right? Uh, so imagine anybody spending $20,000 on anything. Right. Yeah. And, and, and you guys probably weren't working a lot. So you were trying to figure out how to pay bills and you pay some rent and eat and then pay money for these recordings and, and shop a deal. I mean, the process is got to be daunting. I could, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm having trouble shopping this idea. Like, Hey, come on and talk on live stream with me. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I'll tell you what, you know what, man? Um, by the way, Je Jeff, this is a great idea. And I I totally applaud you for doing this. I think that all anybody, all of us, us musicians and us, like anyone in this industry, we need to keep ourselves in everyone's mind as much as we can yeah. to, to yeah. any extent that we can. Um, so <laughs> anyways, that was, that was a total tangent, but, but, but it's great that you're doing this. I, I, I think it's great that you're doing this. Um, you know, my thing's been kind of a, a mild success and, you know, but it's making me happy and I'm sure this is making you happy and, and, and thanks for having me on, man. I, I appreciate that. Well, well, he, well here's, uh, just, I want to get back to the, the daunting task of, of this record thing, because, it, you know, uh, I know some people, uh, some stories about people like from Nebraska, uh, the guitar player from Mr. Mr. was from Nebraska. Oh, wow. Okay. And they come out with a band and, uh -huh. uh, or they, they formed a band here and they, they did all that you did and, and it was grueling. And then all of a sudden they got taken on in that one, uh, uh, that one big hit that they had. And I, I forget what it is now, but they had like one big hit. Uh, broken wings or something i think right yeah uh, big hit and, i mean it was huge and all of a sudden there were this this giant band mr mister and uh everybody had this idea like wow they just went out there and boom they were successful no <laughs> they they had to go through all of this the stuff you guys went through see that's that's the thing that i think is the biggest myth ever uh is is that you know Anyone who sees their their favorite movie star or their favorite band or or anything, they 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 to them they just appeared out of nowhere and they just went, oh, that person just showed up, and they just filled out the application at uh, at whatever movie studio or record company or whatever, and they got the job right, and that's just not how it works. Right, it works by putting in a lot of work and all of those guys, anybody who anyone has ever seen uh, who's, who's a huge success, they definitely put in their work, mm -hmm. you know? So, so when you guys did, did you have to like book a club or get a club gig and then sit there and play and have an A and R guy come and see you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we did. Um, we played at the whiskey and the, uh, it's a couple of places that kind of went by the wayside back in the nineties. Uh, we played at a place uh, called the strand in Hermosa beach, where we actually had uh, a lot of people uh, show up at that show. Um, uh, and that was kind of well into our success in California. Uh, after we recorded our album in California, that was probably about six, eight months into that. Um <clears throat> And, uh, and whatever, for, for whatever reason, it just, it just didn't happen, yeah. you know? Uh, so what happened then? So now, now you're, you're here, the band is yeah. happening and you're going now what? <laughs> 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 what did you do? Well, um, uh, our singer quit and I took over the band and we did cover songs for a while. Uh, with me, I just took over as the lead singer. I took over as the band leader. Uh, I was the lead singer. 
and, uh, and, and you know what, I, honestly, I hadn't been dealing with any of that stuff or leasing or did all of that stuff. Right. He like handled all of the business and calls and all that. So I took over, uh, and it was a lot of work, man. I, I, I didn't have, I really, you know, gained a new appreciation for, for what a guy did. Uh, and so, um, Goodness gracious, I, I, I want to try to truncate this story a little bit as much as possible because <laughs> that that all happened such a long time ago. Like even that, even that happened back in like the late 90s. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> what I realized after doing that for a while was it was better for me to be a free agent mm -hmm. and not be like a totally dedicated band guy. And uh, I started in addition to working ex not totally exclusively with my band, I started to do some other gigs and that kind of is what the road that led me to working with um, uh, some of these other companies like, um, uh, like uh, American events, uh, NRG, uh, Mama said entertainment, uh, you know, some of these, some of these other guys that, you know, Basically, I just started working as a free agent and just started working as a sub for when their guy, their the most of these guys, most of these bands just had a regular guy, but their their regular guy would occasionally mm -hmm. get another gig, and it would be a good fortune for me to fill in for them. A lot of work. It was a lot of work, man. I, I had to like not only keep it together for the band I was playing with steadily, but I would have to work my butt off. To, to get a new playlist together for uh, for, an, uh, for a, a band that I didn't play with. So, so I so I'd do that. And then uh, basically I got to the end of this rhythm where it was like every week I would I, I didn't even know what I had going on the next week. I would just like I would just get through the weekend, look at my email on Monday, right. look at the song list and go, okay, I, that's what I got to do. I got to do that by this weekend. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, so I, so that's what I did. And that's, that was about 10 years ago, uh, that, that I got into that. And, and honestly, it has been the best thing, uh, being a free agent for me ha has been awesome. I know for a lot of people being like a band person is awesome. And I totally get that because, you know, being, you, there's a lot of strength in numbers and a strength in, in being in a group. But, uh, for me, I was getting a lot out of just being, uh, a free agent and my income went way up and right. you know, yada, yada, yada. Well, so, and then, and then I met Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> the minute you met me. <laughs> dude. So, uh, so here's what I think come, you come from uh, Oklahoma. I come from Nebraska. What people don't understand sometimes about what we do. I came out here playing a circus and then did cruise ships, but then I jumped into just having, just getting work. And right. I, but instead of staying in Los Angeles, I went to San Francisco, moved in with my buddy, Tom Pollitzer's parents who plays ta with Tower of Power sax player. Sweet. And uh, and then what I started doing is getting trying to get gigs the way you were describing and just, you know, working for up there. They were agents uh, and uh, <clears throat> difference between just working you know, casuals, we call them here in back East, they call them club dates, mm. uh, but casual is, you know, just playing for a wedding or playing a bar mitzvah or playing a corporate party or doing that. Right. And, and I, I kind of hooked up with one band, but the guys like you, right. Uh, work more if you can play with all the different bands and you have to be kind of right. well-rounded guy and know how to play two and four and do all the, the current songs. And um, uh, down here in Los Angeles, uh, they call them offices, you know, up in San Francisco, they don't call them an office. So when I moved to, to LA, if somebody says, Oh, did you, what office does, did you call? And I go, what do you mean office? Well, would be like uh, West coast, Dubois, a, 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 N, you know, NRG, all those, they're called guys were telling me it's called an office, you know, and you get, really, I yeah. haven't heard that. Uh, so, so that's well, what they said in in in, uh, in San Francisco. They would call it an office. Well, when I came here, the guys that were introducing me mm. to, the, to the scene or uh, were like older guys were calling them an office. Yeah. Okay. 
So if you, uh, and the, the idea is if you work for uh, like West Coast, then you get lots of gigs because you do all their gigs, but you got to get in the band, right? You got to get in one of their bands. And right. um, so, uh, so there became this, well, if you can get in with that office and that were, that's what uh, some of the guys, uh, mm -hmm. do you know Tom Kolb, a uh, guitar player? Um, I definitely have heard that name. Yeah. Well, you know, he's kind of like, you know, my age kind of guy. And, and there was a time when people called him office. They may not call him an office anymore. I don't know. Mm. You, you know, it's just what they were telling me. But that's the only way as a musician you can work and gig. And here's what a lot other people don't really sometimes understand is we're that 1099 uh, kind of uh person that contract labor kind of person that falls in all those those weird kind of cracks w with you know how we get paid and we're not always on payroll and right right so we're making good money by the way did you hear the news about ab5 is it going away music okay i just i was just literally talking to my friend right before this interview yeah uh now okay i gotta totally look at, look into this for myself but the word is musicians are excluded from AB5 now. Oh. So, yes, all of you out there, <laughs> take heed. That is the word right now. And look into it for yourselves. Don't to totally take my word for it. But that's, that's the word on the street right now is that AB5 is not going to, <laughs> as if, What's so funny about the AB5 thing is like, literally, I was so worried about that. Yeah, yeah. In February. And then this <laughs> other thing happened that made me like, oh, that's not even slightly a big deal. Right. <laughs> right. But, you know, but this is this is my point that I'm saying. I'm kind of circling back to that you're describing getting those gigs is that that's the world that it's getting crushed. That I know. Nobody thinks about we're the guys that are out playing for that silly corporate party that you go with your wife or something, and you oh the boss is having a party. Oh that band was kind of good, and then then you go right. to friend's wedding. No, oh, that band's kind of. We're those guys. Exactly. And, you know, and I don't want. Okay, I don't want to be like some big. It's going to come off like I'm being a big whiner about it, but <laughs> you know, yeah. I I do feel to is some at, there's just some points in time. That I just feel like we get really taken for granted, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Especially when something like AB five comes up, and they're just like they just didn't even give it a thought. We'll just lump all of those guys right into the thing, and and it doesn't matter. And you know, come on, man, you guys got to give this a little bit more thought, you know. Yeah, yeah. So the, here's the thing: is when when I started playing and, you know, I always had aspirations of maybe, you know, being really great and being a big time drummer and everything. But the thing that I knew I wanted needed to do was just work and right. And just, just keeping time and playing, playing gigs. And so that's all I ever really did. And I would practice, uh, you know, enough to play those gigs. And I was happy playing music. Like you're happy playing music. You're always fun to have on the gigs. And there, there are hundreds, if not thousands of us that are just here guys just doing those gigs and we're making an okay living and we're happy, but all it takes is one week of missed gigs and we get screwed. I mean, it, it really right. doesn't take long for us to just all of a sudden we're, we're homeless and uh, the AB5 was g getting people freaked out. But when this coronavirus hit, you know, um, <clears throat> the, the, Fe January, February, always a little slower and things right. pick up, but the timing of closing everything down is right when everybody starts to really pick up their year's work right? in, in our kind of world a little bit. Right, right, right. So for so many of us, like right when we thought it was going to be picking up, yeah. it is just, I mean, it's not, it's not only not happening, but we're not even sure if we see the light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, we're not even sure what's going to happen. Um, I mean, here's the thing, you know, fingers <laughs> crossed. <laughs> right. I don't. Uh, so here, yeah. Here <laughs> we can get into really philosophical, you know, area here with 
you know, when's the right time to get things back going again? I mean, all of us are hoping, yeah, please, please soon, like as soon as possible. Right. You know, it's, it's a double-edged sword because part of me is going like dumb shits. Why are they opening back up? But at the same time, I'm right. It needs it to open back up. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you know so you reach this point where you're like is the is the cure worse than the disease you know you 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 wonder that sometimes when you i mean this is so i mean i don't i don't even know how to comment on on this this is just never you or me nobody i've ever talked to during this time has any idea uh, we none of us have ever experienced anything like this. So, so can, none of us can go. I know exactly what to say about this. No, no, not even our grandparents. We nobody's had any idea what. No, no, I had, uh, and uh, you know, I, I had my meltdown four weeks ago when um, uh, it was the first time in my life when all of my work disappeared and I had no other option. No other option. And in my life, whenever something, you know, went kind of crazy, there was always, oh, yeah, I guess I could do that. Uh -huh. uh, while we're talking, I just got a text from John Mader um, saying there, these people, there was a, an article about these companies are hiring, you know, during the COVID crisis. Mm -hmm. So there, there are places to go um, now, uh, you know, at 61 and, uh, you know, trying to, trying to get a job and this is the only training I have, you know, I actually did, I did, I did get accepted as an Amazon flex driver when the offers are available <laughs> and every day I would check them. The, there was no offers for me to drive. So <laughs> I'm like, okay. And then it, it paid like, you know, did, bucks an hour or something. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. Obviously our industry has just, totally dried up yeah uh so we're, we're looking at doing anything we can do and and i've looked at that too i mean i heard on the radio sprouts is hiring mm -hmm. and i'm like yeah i might i might be down there applying at, at sprouts I, I i might go to my local pavilions i mean i've noticed a whole bunch of people there they've added uh kids kids coming in and working to you know stock shelves so, right. Oh, yeah. You know what? So, so here's the thing. This is, it may not come roaring back like in like, like a light switch. It just switches back on, but it's going to come back eventually. Yeah. Yeah. In the meantime, there's zero shame in just doing what you can to help. Yeah. Yeah. You so, know, this needs some, there's this, this is a, an extraordinary situation. And it does need some help, yeah. you know, and you can potentially get paid and you could still pay your rent and your bills and everything, you know, so why not? A pause, it, it, you know, if, if we just get people to give us a pause and give us a, give us a break and, and we can get back to work, you know, it, and here's the thing that's really uh, sad about this. And, and I've, a couple of people I've had on have said this, well, what happens if we can't do music? And it, it's, it's been my life from as far as I can remember. I don't want to do anything but music. I know. Right. And how do you, it's like ripping the soul out of a person. Like, I'm sorry, you can't do music anymore. You know? Right. Right. <laughs> it's like, it's like, and like a, an absurd thing to even suggest. Right. You know? Yeah. And, and here's the other thing that I talk about with just, almost everybody, even with, with Bernie, we were talking about the idea that what we do doesn't, just doesn't have a monetary uh, point to it. It's like, we get our music for free on the internet. Why should we have to pay you? Right. You know, and, and it started, it started with Napster way back when they were people were downloading music for free that's it's and now we've had a new whole new generation right yeah so for those of you historians out there <laughs> right Napster which is this thing that you may or may not have ever heard of was a watershed moment yeah. in 
music and up to that point and when did that happen was that 93 no it was more towards the mid to late 90s i believe it okay yeah okay that sounds right so was mid let's say the, in the 90s mid mid 90s everything changed and and for real up to that point the the record industry was huge mm -hmm. millions of dollars were being made um and the record industry. okay that's that we could have a talk about that <laughs> by itself the record industry clearly just didn't see the writing on the wall at all resisted it utterly and basically wrote their own tombstone and 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 that was it i mean the record industry just died because they just didn't care to see the reality of the situation right. um and 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 that was it but but literally like even okay there was an album from candlebox which just kind of came which was kind of right before that that sold like uh I don't remember. I don't remember exactly. They sold so many copies. They made so much money. And that was literally right before the whole Napster thing. And then after the Napster thing, it, it just, nobody made any money after that. You know, everything changed. <laughs> now we have this whole new generation, including my 14 year old daughter who actually I've got her buying CDs. I have her buy the C and she wants awesome. the physical product, but there's this whole idea of why buy cds you can just get it free uh, right you can get it on youtube or you can listen on spotify or uh, and there's a whole conversation about that how spotify doesn't pay any royalties to the music writers or you know or and the people that play on the music don't have on the records don't necessarily make money but the songwriters should make some right and they don't get paid like a penny or you know a fraction of a penny actually this this is another interesting topic because what's uh what is available to monetize these days is uh is music for placements in film mm -hmm. and television mm -hmm. that's that's actually a, a big deal now mm -hmm. um uh, because okay, after after the the record industry just totally <laughs> completely screwed it, um, the the movie industry. I believe that the film and television industry kind of saw what happened there and 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 went okay, we don't want to do that, and they and they have so now we have all actually there's a tremendous number of uh, like there's Netflix and there's mm -hmm. Amazon Prime and. Uh, AT and T and Spectrum and everybody are getting in on this, can, creating a, a video content. Um, there's YouTube. Uh, there's uh, there's all this stuff, um, and those guys have figured out how to get paid, mm -hmm. and they are still paying for music. So that is a thing. Um, so and that's that's you know jeff we could have another discussion right. well, well, well that's that's kind of where this can lead to too um uh but before we do that i want i want can i play this video of you and do you sing on that video that i was that i was showing uh, what, what, what video we got going on let me this, let, I, let me see if i can find you your song do you want me to play that one you can play yeah. that that's that's uh the your song is a uh instrumental song Oh, which one do you sing on? Uh, uh, let me see. Okay, let me get on my. I have to look at my own YouTube page. I'll try to do this quickly. Um, YouTube. Here comes the sun. I think that's instrumental too. Um, there are some that I sing on there. Okay. And shoot. Uh, uh, <laughs> I okay. I forget how to navigate my own YouTube page. Uh, um, I'm looking at it, and okay, the very first ones you see on my YouTube page are ones that I do instrumentally. So let me, uh, if you look at playlists, okay, look at in front of the curtain on the playlists. Okay. Uh, you will find. Uh, in uh, in front it, it, of, oh, there it is, okay beautiful playlist so the one that starts immediately is uh last dance for mary jane 
I also do Bad Moon Rising, Summer of 69, Magic Carpet Ride, and Wicked Game. Okay, which one do you want me to play? Which one shall I play? Let me see. I'll just do Last Dance for Mary Jane. That's a, that's a fun one. Uh, okay. All right. So just give me a second, and I'll, I'll play it. And then we will get to uh, where we're going to go to make our money. Right? I mean, uh, I know. We will get to that. So let me take me a second to get this going. And uh, one second. Almost there. Oh, I'm looking at that. This is this is your page yeah. loading up right now. She moved down here at the age of 18. Threw the boys away. It was more than they'd seen. I was introduced and before she started grooving, she said, I dig your paper, but I got to keep moving. Oh. By the way, that is totally live. I recorded that 100% live. Last dance for Mary Jane. One more time to kill the fame. I feel summer creeping in and I'm tired of this town again. Yeah. Cool, cool. That's it, man. That yeah. was a that was a sheet that I that I stapled to the ceiling. Hold on. Oh, there's Bad Moon Rising playing. Okay, I got to <laughs> again. Um, and, and, oh, I'm back on me. All right, so here we go. Very cool. Yeah. So, um, so that's so people know that you actually play and sing. You know, we've just been talking. You know, you actually could. You're actually. You know, I'm not. You, you're the shit, pretty much. Greg Scott, by the way, Greg Scott says Richie Sullivan shred. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. When did he say that? But during our interview, he po he posted. See, you can't see the comments, but I can. Oh, might, really? Are we? Are, by the way, are you on? Are you live on Facebook or uh, on YouTube or or where are you at right now? This is Facebook. Okay, uh, but. I then I download the video and I put it on YouTube as well. Okay. So, so if you go to my YouTube Jeff News uh, page, then you see only the videos and you don't see all the other posts. Okay. Right. So you'll be able to see it on both places and and you can share it on your thing. But now, but I want to get to uh, you know moving forward though. So many of us uh, musicians are now sitting in our rooms. Now the reason why I'm doing this. Is when I had my meltdown. I'm like, okay, I got all this gear. Maybe I can do voiceovers or something. Right, right. So I, I, one night I was in the middle of all my. I honestly was crying because I wasn't going to be able to pay my rent for the first time ever. And right. So I cleaned yeah, out. Yeah, you're this, not the only one. Right. So I cleaned out this room and I hooked all this stuff up and I started researching this and and just started doing it. <clears throat> I made a couple of demo voiceovers and sent to some people. And and you're now in your uh, in your room doing your doing your live stream things. A lot of people are doing it. I think it's going to be sort of the new way uh, that right. a lot of people make money. But uh, teaching. And then you brought up something that nobody has said uh, to me yet about placing songs. And, uh, and in this, you have a studio there, and you can do it. And you know, and I know Greg just has something going on with the uh, the Songland uh, TV show thing. Right, uh, right, yeah. He is okay. So I would encourage you guys to check out a fellow on uh, YouTube named Mike Elsner uh, that I got hipped to recently. Uh, he just does like. Uh, he, um, kind of a, a video blog about doing uh, television and, and film placements. Um, and uh, so, I mean, and there's, there's, a, there's other people out there that are talking about the same thing. There's some good education about it. Um, so this is one of the things. Now, I, I just moved into, into my place. I'm building out a studio in the spare bedroom. That's going to be the workspace for myself for writing music and um, 
for writing and recording and, and producing and mixing and, and doing all that stuff. Uh, and, and the purpose is to create content for mm. film and television. Yeah. And, uh, and, and this is, this is one of the things that even like, I kind of so wish I was already up and running because I would probably, I would probably just still be making money and I wouldn't be worried about any of this stuff. Well, you, you know, maybe this, so maybe there's a silver lining, by the way, Rick Howland from uh, Oklahoma says, hello. Oh, that's my brother-in-law. <laughs> that's, that's Rick. Hi, Rick. How are you? <laughs> Thank you oh. for, for commenting. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, I think this is actually driven us to a point where we might have thought of something while we're doing our gigs. We might have had an idea. Mm -hmm. Just never would have done it. Right. It's like, totally right. with my life, with my live streaming thing. I was like, hey, you know, I think it'd be fun to do that. Right. It was already mm -hmm. in my head a couple of years ago, but now it's like, okay, well, you need to do this. It's yeah, it's time to do it. And, and no, in my, uh, and even, even Bernie was saying, just because I talked to him, he goes, who wants to hear drums on a live stream? Like you at least play guitar and sing, you know, and I by trade am a drummer, you know, and I'm a sound guy. So mm -hmm. I have nothing to offer, but this, and when, what other point in history would somebody like me be able to call up twice a day a musician and sit and talk for an hour when would anybody have given me the time or have i made the time and then would right. people sit and listen for an hour right right you well know, these are unique times right 100 percent. So, so it's forcing us into this sort of uncomfortable uh thing to now where are we going to go here and this is maybe the start of it well yeah uh, and, and this could be a you know the beginning of a bright future mm. um you know there there could be opportunities in this and and i guess that should be you know what we should talk about that there <laughs> could be a silver lining in all of this you know maybe these are going to be tough times okay no maybe about it this is going to be some tough times but we're all going to have to look at things a different way uh because we're kind of being forced to um and we may come away from all of this with a new skill set that's going to help us down the line mm -hmm. as musicians yeah right yeah absolutely but but even okay um you know there's there's you jeff you can play drums you could play drums um for somebody and totally do it online you but know do i want to <laughs> you know that's that so there there's a whole other thing you know obviously there's a lot of work that's right. gonna have to go into it for right. any of us to do any of this stuff okay and i haven't even gotten into this right you know and again i don't want to be a big old whiner or anything but this you know when okay okay i'm gonna plug my show dude i'm just gonna go right ahead i'm doing five songs at five o'clock wednesday through Saturday and uh, that the it's Facebook uh, Richie Sullivan and uh, to be honest I've been working my butt off on it I it's it's been a ton of work and you know I, I possibly could have been doing something else I could have been staying on the EDD website like constantly you know or doing you know something like that uh, but instead I've just decided I wanted to keep my name out there as much as I can. And, uh, but doing even a 20 minute show, you know, 20 minutes has been like 20 to a half hour. And, uh, I do a lot of prep. I do a lot of prep on it. Yeah. And especially because people are calling in and we, we talked about that at the beginning of the show here. Uh, well, you know, taking requests. Well, it, well, you've got to kind of know songs. Yeah. Know? So I, that's why I said, you know, do you know a polka? <laughs> <laughs> but, Again, I say I know a lot of songs. I don't know them all yet. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, I, what I what I try to do, to be honest, uh, Jeff, yeah. not to toot my own horn, um, I probably know a couple hundred songs or something like that that I could actually uh reasonably pull off without uh totally butchering um uh 
but uh, so I mean, it's people will make sometimes make a request, and 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 I will do my best at or at least get a verse and a chorus in, or right. do something like that. Um, and actually, those kind of interactions are usually really fun, um, and it kind of tends to keep uh, audiences engaged a little bit more to do something like that than to just me do some set thing that I already had in mind. And and this is why I think. And four weeks ago, this is this night right now. It's been four weeks ago when I had my first. I just got on and talked for myself for an hour. Wow. Weeks ago tonight, and I made a commitment, and I said it right then. I'm going to do twice a day next week, and then I kept doing that until like right now. I'm I'm going to try to keep doing, and I three and eight, and I think the whole reason why. To, and for you to do it consistently, like come on at five and do it like right through Friday every every day because people will start then, you mm -hmm. know, let's tune into Rich. So, Jeff, actually, what tell me what, what is uh, let's talk about what your format is because, um, what time are you, are you doing this every day? Every are you day, every day except uh, tomorrow? I'm gonna, gonna take my first day off tomorrow. So, but, you've done this every day since then every day two a day with on on a couple of sundays i did three and on wednesdays i do three awesome so i i have probably i don't know how many you know maybe 40 uh one hour shows already you know and that's great and, and the format is and like we were talking ahead of time it's in the green room well i just let's get on let's talk and because this is how we would talk if we were sitting right for a gig to start and right so much the very first one i did was with um uh john mater okay and he plays drums with ed hamilton and you know that and we just sat and talked like this and some guy uh posted he said you know what you guys just dropped so much information i mean this was really well worth the watch just in talking about our gigs right you know right. so so, you know, you don't know who's going to listen and who's going to watch and grab something out of it, you know, uh, from from talking about what we're going to do now to the movie placement of material in movies, you know, right. and, uh, you, you don't know who's going to grab a, a morsel of something that will help them just sitting and talking. Right. Right. Yeah. You know what? That didn't even occur to me till we got almost to the end of this thing. Uh, but but seriously, that is something you can do. Anybody, anyone out there, any, any musicians out there who are listening, that's something you can do. And even if it's, you know, just some quick little riff or whatever, there are websites you can upload that to yeah. right now. So if you just got something, some piano riff or some violin riff or a guitar riff or whatever, just record those all day long and then upload them. And yeah. there's a chance you'll make some cash on it. And, and, and you know... This could turn into something that's a side hustle for you in the long run. Right. And and think about what people don't realize, all of those little 15 second, 30 second spots, you know, you only you only need, you know, 12 bars or something to fill up 15 seconds or 30 seconds. You know, I mean, yeah, it, uh, come on. I mean, it's almost like the old Mus Muzak days. Yeah, right. And there's there's a craving for content that has ne that really has never existed before, uh, like a, like we were talking about a couple of minutes ago. With there's so many platforms, there's so many people. Uh, there's the Netflix and the you know I, the Prime, and, and I don't want to go through the whole list again, <laughs> but there's so many things. There's so many people making. Uh, television these days and, and, and movies and independent movies. And, and even I even watched a, a little YouTube thing that focused purely on the future of YouTube videos. And you know what, you know, the, the payoff might be small on that, but YouTube's actually getting really, really, really big. And the projections on that YouTube could end up being, the new network for yeah. that matter. It, you it, know. it takes time. It, it takes a little bit of time and, and it's a slow build process, but, but I, it's once you get there and you can make, you can make good money. So I just yeah. want to point this out. We've been at an hour and five minutes. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we're, 
you're going like, what are we going to talk about? Well, you know, I was, I was sort of like, what are we going to talk about, Jeff? <laughs> I mean, this, this was great. I mean, I had, I had, I've had so much fun just even just talking about something that you didn't know that I might know. Uh, KOMA radio. I know, dude, KOMA. <laughs> <laughs> man I, I i wonder if those i actually i haven't been in oklahoma in such a long time uh well, c- certainly when i'm there i don't listen to am radio uh yeah. they may be still on the air i they don't know may be. Uh, you know i i don't know but um uh you, they they certainly were a thing when i you know fm radio didn't come around and really get big until the late 70s right and so my formative years were only uh, AM radio, and they were only those two radio stations. And um, uh, just just a long story short, for me, uh, I ended up when I was uh, 13, 14, calling the agent for a group that I heard advertised on KOMA and said, I have a band I want to play in, be one of your bands. And I ended up playing with a band called the red dogs from lawrence kansas and um uh, whoa and ended up traveling through the midwest with a band and quit high school when i was 15. so yeah I Jeff, got... that's a great story <laughs> that's so awesome so that came from koma out of oklahoma Yes, it was it was that because i kept hearing them john brown entertainment john brown entertainment i kept hearing it and uh and i i got the number and i called them and i said do you need a do you need a band i had a band i was playing with in high school they came out and watched us and said okay you got to do this we need a band for our band called the red dogs and they hired us and wow all all those guys were out of school but i wasn't so i quit school (laughs) (laughs) that's awesome that also that speaks so much to the level of marketing that you had to do like you really had to reach way out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Back in those days, you know, it wasn't like you just had to Google something no. to, to find out about it. You had to, you had to make an expensive long distance phone call to somebody. Yes. Yes. It was, it was long distance. And my dad let me know, you know, you're going to pay for that phone call. Right. <laughs> no doubt. He absolutely did. I'm sure, you know, and it probably cost you a couple bucks, right? Yeah. Back then it was a big deal. It was a big deal, you know, a couple of bucks on a long distance phone call, man. It was, yeah, my, my dad whooped my ass. <laughs> but <laughs> He held you to that, I'm sure, man. That's awesome, man. That is so awesome, Jeff. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so let's, we're at hour and eight. So we probably should wrap it up only because yeah, I, people, people don't, won't watch till the very end a lot of times, but they cool. always watch at the start. So I'm glad we plugged your radio, your live stream first, and we plugged it again, and we'll make sure to tune in uh, at five at five on your webpage, uh, Richie Sullivan, Facebook, right? Yep. And are you going to do it every day or are you going to do it? Um... So, yeah, so it's five at five, five songs, five o'clock, and it is not every day. I'm doing it Wednesday through Saturday. Okay. That's the format. So basically I'm doing a little downtime in between to kind of regroup and try to, I'm trying to keep it fresh, you know, do whatever I can to, you know, like kind of get myself together. And (laughs) well, I, I, unlike me where I've all I'm doing, all I've been doing for four weeks is just living in this room. (laughs) It's the only thing that's kept me sane, by the way. (laughs) Right. Well, it, it could be that uh, in the long run, this is what keeps us all alive, you know? Oh, man, I, I hope so. You know, I, I I feel better today. I had a, I had a good day. I had a, had a great conversation with uh, Tish Diaz this afternoon, and I, I didn't know uh, stuff about her. She played with Jersey Boys and played with Aunt, uh, Andy Williams and auditioned for Stevie Wonder, and she didn't – the guy asked her for, hey, you want to audition for Stevie? And she goes, Stevie who? <laughs> And she's like, the guy goes like, Stevie Wonder. I mean, what? Who doesn't know who Stevie is? <laughs> you know, right, right. So, and then, uh, and then having this conversation, this was great because we got to t- we talked about some really cool stuff. So, uh, and it was fun for me, and I, I really needed it. Thank you, Richie. I appreciate you saying absolutely, that. man, absolutely, and uh, I enjoyed it very much too. It's always good to 
I, I actually, I, I kind of miss you on, uh, you know, we know each other from the a American events right. yep. gigs. Yeah. And, uh, and then I didn't see it there for a while and, uh, you know, and I kind of miss you and, uh, you're an awesome sound man. And I, I, you know, uh, I miss seeing you. You're a good guy. Well, thank you. Well, hopefully we'll get a chance to do some live stuff again. Indeed. All right. Indeed. So on that note, I'm going to close out the show with my usual way of the song, uh, that I'm sort of using as my theme song. Uh, it's a song by Roger Smith from uh, Tower of Power. Yes. There's some good San Francisco music right there. Yep. All right. Thank you, Richie. Good night. All right. Good night, Jeff. <laughs>